Welcome to another episode of HR Nightmares. We are very excited to have a special guest here, Buffy Andrews, who is a holistic <laughs> mental health professional. So we have a lot to talk to her about. Here with my ladies, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Amy Conway. I'm Beth Looney. And um, again, this is Buffy. And Buffy, I'd love for you to just kind of give the full rundown on how you came to be owner and founder of Madewell Center for Wholeness, which Ooh, you founded in 2017. But from what I understand, <laughs> you're a licensed clinical social worker, a natural health practitioner. You're trained in ED, EMDR, which you're going to have to explain to us. <laughs> And you're a yoga teacher, which we love. And we know Gabby out there. Gabby's like a major yogi. So mm. she um, is loving that you're our guest here today. So <laughs> tell, tell us about you and your business and why you got into it in the first place. Yeah. So I'm Buffy Andrews. Um, I started Madewell Center in 2017, kind of starting out just doing the yoga classes and workshops and things like that. And then in 2019, after Hurricane Florence, I started the mental health counseling piece of it. Um, really got into it. I would say it's a God thing. Like I just kind of fell into therapy and social work realm, um, had no idea. I actually studied film and media production, oh, oddly wow. enough, yeah, in undergrad. And then in when I moved to Wilmington, every big girl job that I wanted or, you know, thought I'd be good at said that I needed a social work degree that I didn't have. And so I was like, hmm, I guess I have to go back to school. <laughs> so <laughs> I went back to school and then in going back to school, um, I just kind of, I started shadowing therapists at, you know, Coastal Horizon Center, and I realized I really loved it. I loved the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then when I got out of school, I did intensive in-home services that are um, kind of more crisis level work with like high suicidality and conduct disorder kids, um, and realized that a lot of them needed more holistic help than what they were getting. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of what spurred my, you know, thought process to want to start my own thing. I've always been a little bit of an entrepreneur. My dad was someone growing up who was always like coming up with new business title names, you know, and we just like spitball ideas and things back and forth. And so I think I kind of got that from him a little bit, you awesome. know? Yeah. Yeah. So what does it mean? Tell like the listener when you say holistic, mm. you know, health resources, what do you kind of mean by that? What yeah. all things can you find at the Madewell Center that support that? Yeah, for sure. So we do mental health counseling. Um, we also offer gut health coaching and counseling. Mm. Um, Again, puppy sponsor. Poppy, yeah, sponsor. yeah. <laughs> probiotics, <laughs> soda. probiotics, prebiotics, all the things. Um, but yeah, so we have a gut health specialist. So she actually can run like a gut stool sample test on people to see like what kind of toxins and bacteria you got going on in there. Um, and then we have a health coach and we do monthly workshops that are just educational, free for the community to be able to learn about a lot of different topics, whether it's stress management, whether it's um, this month, it's maternal mental health. Mm. Um, next month, it's going to be autoimmunity. So just a lot of educational hmm. things. And then I do yearly retreats as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell us about your yearly retreats. Oh, they're so magical. Beth actually went on one. <laughs> yeah. A magical it. retreat. I did. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> it was really, really great. Yeah, we do a lot of yoga. We eat healthy meals. We just spend some time kind of processing life together. Um, usually it's at a fun Airbnb, beach house somewhere, mountain house. Um, I kind of change it up where I like to do it every year. It just depends on location. This year it's actually at Ruffin's Family Beach House. Oh, is it? In Ocean Isle? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how Buffy and I met each other because we have a mutual friend. Who, well, Ruffin worked with you. It yes. made well. Yes, he did. Um, and I... We go to Emotion and we work out together. Okay. <laughs> That's how we became friends. You're living We're a healthy life. Regular together. workout buddy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have met you unless you're on this podcast, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Wilmington is such a like small world kind of place, but also so huge in so yeah. many ways, too. So it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, I love that you have this slogan on your notebook, never stop growing. I think it's really important. And I find myself feeling really fortunate every time we have these recordings once a month. Um, I feel like I always learn something from whether it be the guest or, or these two co-hosts. It's always, it's always fun. And I think, you know, that's kind of an interesting mindset to have just as a person, a human and employee, um, never stop growing. You own your life, you own your career mm -hmm. and just always be looking for ways to be a sponge and just pick up one little thing every day and see how you can change your own behaviors or the way that you approach work and mm -hmm. do it a little bit better tomorrow. For sure. Yeah. Um, okay, what do you guys want to uh, ask her? We want to ask her about just like some uh, really important things that we deal with, like when we have, a you talked about crisis situations. Uh, we've all been 
doing this HR game for, you know, 20 ish years a piece. And we've seen everything from, you know, you mentioned suicide, uh, suicides by an employee or domestic violence situations, mm-hmm. even showing up to the workplace, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, terminations gone wrong and people flipping out and it's all, you know, PTSD situations. So we've been through it. It's only every situation is unique in its own right. And you never you kind of always know what you should do. But like, give us some tried and true ways to deal with a crisis at work, especially Mm -hmm. for folks that don't have an HR person that's been through this stuff over and over again. Like from a mental health perspective, like how can you handle somebody maybe that's got some, their behaviors are deviating from normal behavior, Mm -hmm. right? There's Mm -hmm. something different about them. Mm -hmm. How do we handle them or direct them to the right resources? Yeah. I mean, I would say for one, the probably the best thing to do is have a lot of preventative care for people, right? Because crises happen when we're not taking care of ourselves on the front end, right? Like you don't get a crisis just out of the blue. Like things have built up to where they are. Yeah. And so the more preventative health and wellness things like you can put in place, the better off someone's going to be. So having, you know, maybe a counselor that is kind of like your resident company counselor that people can go talk to and see, right? Like that would be a great resource for a lot Mm -hmm. of businesses. Um, Or having at least a counseling center that your company partners with. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also say if they're coming to you in crisis, like meet their practical needs first, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of crises or maybe like financial things, or, you know, maybe they got kicked out of their apartment or something like that that's causing an extreme stress, figure out what those things are first, right? Give them a meal, talk, like go on a walk, you know, like meet people's basic needs first. And then you'll find that you can really come around people with more supports. Now, if it's something like somebody's coming to you in your office with high suicidality in that moment, Maybe they need to go get checked into the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Or maybe they need RHA mobile crisis. Um, That's a resource here in town that will come to you and do an assessment of suicidality. We've got a lot of listeners outside this area. So like what what are similar sort of like general Mm -hmm. resources across the United States that people could rely on for that? Well, there's a lot of mobile crises type units in pretty much every city. Like I know we have some in Western Carolina. I'm sure if you just look up mobile crisis in your area, wherever you're at, you could find something. Um, As far as like suicide hotline, 988 is the new suicide Mm -hmm. hotline number. Um, Everywhere? Yep. Yeah. National suicide hotline number. Okay, that's good to know. Simple, 988. (laughs) How do you Um, feel about 211? Uh, through United Way. So like that's um, everywhere yeah. around the United States as well. Like when you yeah. dial 211, you get connected to a, a licensed social worker mm-hmm. that kind of looks at, okay, I can't pay my electric bill mm-hmm. and my husband's getting divorced and I'm yeah. getting beat up at home and I can't pay for daycare, right. but I'm going to lose my job because I can't show up for work. Like, mm-hmm. And they kind of look at the whole big picture and mm-hmm. hook you up with all the different mm-hmm. United Way resources in your local area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's another good number to know. Yeah, I don't have any personal experience with it. Like, I've never had to have anyone use it or anything. So I don't know, you know, how well it functions, but I'm sure it's great. I mean, if that's that's a resource out there, like, use it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good for just HR teams or whoever's helping support that in any kind of business um, to have a list of those resources so you can use them. Because I think Mm -hmm. what happens is so often it's like, we don't have the resource and then something happens mm-hmm. and we're not ready right. to respond. And yeah. I think about how many times, like we had those resources through our company EAPs and our mm-hmm. health plan EAPs, but nobody knew like mm-hmm. who to call, what was the number we had to, yeah. you know, yeah. get in the system and look yeah. it up. It's like, it wasn't as readily accessible as it needed yeah. to be if the employee was standing right in front of you in crisis. Well, and I'll be honest, some of those EAP programs, they're great, but not a lot of providers will take them mm-hmm. um, because they don't reimburse very well. And so uh, I would say probably another way to just help your business provide the best care that it can is to think about your business and think about your people that you're hiring to say, you know, what do what does our company need overall and how do we create 
true accessibility. So maybe that, again, maybe that's partnering with a local counseling center and just saying like, hey, we're going to contract you guys out. We're going to mm-hmm. hire you to be our counselors like right. for our people. Um, because unfortunately, insurance is kind of a nightmare in mm-hmm. a lot of realms. And so that's why there's a lot of disconnect too with being able to get services. Let yeah. me ask a question about that because yeah. I love the idea. I mean, I'd, I'd partner with a counseling center tomorrow. And in fact, I've reached out to several counseling centers around the area to see if, if we could partner and they could come and do workshops or meet mm-hmm. with, you know, come in and do a workshop and then stay for four hours and meet, you know, get mm-hmm. as many employees in mm-hmm. on rotation that you mm-hmm. can for one-on-ones. But um, so many are not taking insurance and mm-hmm. um, employees don't want to pay the cash or they mm-hmm. want to run it through insurance. Do you take insurance? We take some insurances. Yeah. So it just depends. Like right now, and, and every, unfortunately, every provider is different. So something I'll say, this is a trend, I guess, in right. mental health that yeah. I'm seeing is um, we have a lot of uh, mental health practitioners who are coming out of grad school and they want to jump right into private practice, right? Because they see all the other private practice owners and they're like, that's the life that I want. Um, but unfortunately, they're associate licensed at that point when they come out and the only as far as I know, unless things change, and they could, but the only insurance company that will panel an associate license person is Blue Cross Blue Shield mm-hmm. at this point. And so now we've got a, you know, explosion of therapists that are associate licensed, but the only insurance panel that will panel them is Blue Cross Blue Shield. Now they're super backed up. And so it takes a year to get on their panel. And so, you know, you've got all these other insurance companies out there, but they're not paneling associate licensed people. So that's why there's not as many providers. And then Blue Cross is the best paying one. Mm. So if they're not paneling, if, you know, if these other places aren't paneling and you have to be fully licensed, by the time someone is fully licensed, they're like, I don't want to get paid that anymore. You know, yeah. so then they kind of jump ship from those too. Yeah. So it's, it's a kind of a mess a little bit right well, now. Well, and it's hard. I'd imagine that, you know, licensed counselors that do take the insurance, then it's like, are they getting paid the same amount as if they had private and clients that don't right. get insurance? So then are they taking on more than they really have the bandwidth for? Mm-hmm. Do they themselves now need mm-hmm. more resources, which they probably need those yes. anyways because mm-hmm. of the amount of things that they hear. But I think that that's what's really hard. So you know that the ones that you pay a little bit more for are more mm-hmm. experienced. Yeah. They don't have to take insurance yep. because they have a full book of clients mm-hmm. and I don't know. I think about that as an idea of a company of like, mm-hmm. okay, well, can they go half with the employee, right? right? Can yeah, they for the cash if, price? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, can they just pay, you know, the price half. without yeah, insurance? Yeah, yeah. And it's like that's how a company can maybe say, okay, yeah. we're in this and you're in this. We both yeah. have buy-in to your right. wellness, right. and you know, we're gonna contribute into it as well because mm-hmm. we want you to use this, and yeah. we know that not, you know, our EAP, those aren't the, maybe the strongest providers yeah. or it's hard to get into them. Right. It's hard to yeah. find them in yeah. your area. So here's something else we can do right. outside of the insurance plan. Yeah. I mean, you definitely get what you pay for, right? You know, it's like, if you're going to, you know, only settle for the low ball insurance panels. I mean, I even think about some of these resources. I mean, not to shoot down any of these like bigger ones. Oh, yeah. Like, Tell us what you think about the better, yeah, better, better help, help and, and all those you get what you pay for. They're not yeah. reimbursing their providers hardly anything either. So yeah. the people who are on there are people who don't know how to make connections with their local community to get mm-hmm. the network, you know, like Madewell Center has done really well over the years because I'm like out in the community and I'm talking to people and I'm showing up at events yeah. and I am hustling hard yeah. to like- Doing podcasts. To t- yeah, doing podcasts <laughs> to like tell people, <laughs> you know, who we are. And, you know, people who are on Better Help are like- the people who don't want to have to do that, they just want to like get handed right, clients right. really easily. You and know what I mean? how well they're going to handle my complicated life situations and experiences when they can't, right. you know, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Right, right. <laughs> we had a recent thing that I think is is an interesting perspective from an, from an HR person. Mm-hmm. So we had somebody who was, you know, really pretty good employee and all of a sudden they quit without really mm. any notice. Mm. And we tried to call them, we got in touch with them, and it was like something turned off mm. immediately. Mm-hmm. And so we were concerned that there might be some domestic violence. I mean, for mm. that to happen, this mm-hmm. person was like kind of on this career path to really get mm. to be into the next seat. Mm. And so how, how, what would you recommend for, there's only so much that we can expand mm. into a person's life. Right. What do you, how do you, how do you think the HR people should kind of try to help? Mm help their yeah. staff? I mean, it could be maybe something along the lines of kind of like a mentorship program, you know, maybe there's something where you can almost have like 
not obviously not every, you know, big leader can be in every single person's mm-hmm. life that's in their team, but maybe having, you know, teammates who are willing to kind of like adopt a entry level person or whatever mm-hmm. um, to have those conversations and meet for coffee once a week or some, something along those lines. Um, or you could even maybe implement some sort of like anonymous uh, submissions thing, yeah. you know, where people can kind of submit their own. Because we really didn't see anything happening. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden it was just, it was, yeah. and we have lost contact with her now. Yeah. yeah. And so so it is, what happened? You never yeah. know? Never, never knew. Wow. It is hard to believe that like, yeah. no, but like they didn't, that that it individual so didn't have any strange. personal mm-hmm. relationship with anyone inside that would have any idea yeah. And something was happening, right? So it is like, yeah. is there one person in yeah. the organization that, that would have, have known yeah. this was a problem? Right. You know, and yeah. geez, how lonely if the answer is no. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah, that's scary. It was scary. That, yeah, to yeah. have that happen. So but I mean, I think a, kind of a difficult thing with a lot of that is, I mean, that's just like there's an HR role in general, right? It's like at some level, a company realized like we can not handle all the onboarding of these people and the like, you know, explaining of the benefits and the helping connect mm-hmm. with the right, you know, roles or whatever. And so they created a whole role for you, right? At some level, you have to have that role created within your company too for someone who cares. It's like a church, right? Like a church is going to have maybe the big pastor, but then they're also probably going to have like a people care pastor who's right. in charge of making the little subcommittees that are going to also do like the prayer groups or, you know, whatever. Exactly. And so you kind of have to have that system um, and that role maybe even created. Comes, it too. becomes like a philosophy. Yeah. How much yeah. are you going to invest in the well-being of your of your staff? Right. Yeah. 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 Like I that. heard, who was it? Okay. So I have a client, a client that is a great construction general contractor in town. And we partner with another one that's like up in Raleigh on some business things. And my team came back and they were like, Hey, Amy, we were in this meeting yesterday with this other company. There are people, you know, they have like a, just like a a wellness ambassador that like comes Mm -hmm. around and just like says, Hey, do you want to do a yoga class with me later? (laughs) I was like, they're like, so you think you could be that? I'm like, no, I don't have time. I'm here one day a week, two days a week, but I forget what they called it. It was like a spiritual like ambassador or something hmm, in that I was like this yeah. is this a full-time job like I was like tell me more is that? and yeah. I go and it's a You're general like, contractor right so I was this? like so guys seriously do you, are you going to yoga I'm ready, I'm ready. I was like I, I mean I'm here for it are, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. are you coming to yoga class in the lunchroom later right. like you guys <laughs> like my project managers of right. the, so it's like a big group building class, not like a yeah. one-on-one it was right? really yeah. fun they were like we'd be kind of into it. they do like hand massages I'm oh, like wow. okay well okay. hey okay. I'm, I'm all be for a side it. business for all of us when we get a little bit bigger in size we're gonna hire that person they can send her to the HR team yeah yeah but but it is true I mean there are a lot of companies out there that are putting emphasis mm-hmm. in that. Yeah. Um, I met a gal last week who I think works for the hospital mm-hmm. and she does all their like health coaching mm-hmm. basis. She's like a yeah. nutritionist on set yeah. and she's there not for the patient. She's right. there for, for the, the employees. employees. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they've really invested in that program mm-hmm. and she's kind of built that program up. And yeah. I was like, well, gosh, that's mm-hmm. great, right? Those are great examples of yeah. companies that are kind of thinking about what are things we can do internally that yeah. our employees would benefit from. Right. So yeah. I've got a question. So yeah. what would you advise some managers who might have a big team? What are some things that they should look for to make sure kind of to have a pulse on how mm-hmm. their employees' well-being? Mm. Well, I mean, I think some things is kind of, I mean, like you said with the other example is like, pay attention to, you know, are they showing up on time? Are they Mm -hmm. like running in the office like frazzled, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's Mm -hmm. kind of a good pulse. It's just like, how prepared is this person for life in general? (laughs) Um, You know, listening to their conversations or at the cafeteria and lunch Mm -hmm. or whatever, like, are they complaining all the time? Are they um, notice their, I mean, physical appearance is huge just Mm -hmm. in general, right? It's like, are they gaining a lot of weight all of a sudden? Are they um, all of a sudden having hair loss problems mm-hmm. that you've known, you know, I mean, physical appearance is a, can be a really big telltale sign of just how is, how are they doing in their own body? Right. Um, you know, how, what's their postures, posture like all the time? Are they sitting slouched? Oh gosh, now you know? all of us are going to be like, like, like oh, <laughs> okay, now we're all yeah. yeah. I mean, but that kind of stuff can really be telling is like, how are you carrying yourself? I guess kind of overall, but then 
asking, I think one of the writing questions was something like, uh, how are you? Yeah, yeah. The the boss or somebody asked, like, how are you? But yeah. they want to know how are they doing really? But then the employee wasn't understanding that as, like, that doesn't make sense to me to really understand my emotional level. So what else could you ask? Um, so I guess, you know, asking how are you really? Right. Um, but then also maybe there's, like, a scaling of, like, hey, on a scale of one to 10 today, where, what are you walking in with? You know, like, mm-hmm. is it 10 being the most stressed you've ever been in your life or one, you're like feeling pretty good. Um, I think some trends of like stressors that I'm seeing from our clients that are coming in, um, stressors from the workplace are mm-hmm. things like, for one, just employees or employers not being okay with them even taking time to come to their appointments, mm-hmm. right? Like that's a one of the biggest ones right. is when they feel like they... Are, they're like, oh, no, I can't come to my appointment because I'm going to eat into all my sick time, right. you know? And then they feel like they have to save their sick time for if they get the flu, you know, or something right. like that. And so that's, like, a big stressor. Or, like, I'm trying to squeeze this in on my yeah. lunch break, but then yes. I have no time to eat. Then I'm right. also, like— Yes, exactly. Because a lot—I yes. guess it's true because a lot of mm-hmm. practitioners, I'm sure, are also Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. 8 to 5 type mm-hmm. hours. Yeah. So that would yeah. be challenging. Can yeah. I make a suggestion? That's interesting. So um, that sounds like an hourly kind of— mentality problem right mm-hmm. so these people are getting paid by the hour they're like right. counting their sick time. right so um when we had a bunch of hourly employees we actually created a medical appointment policy which oh, allowed people cool, to yeah. leave if they could prove that they had a medical appointment mm-hmm. they could leave for that appointment it didn't eat into sick time pto they didn't get paid but yeah. like they were allowed to go to their medical right, appointment right, right? right and it was unlimited yeah well i think maybe that's the other stressor right is that then they're like oh but i don't get paid for going to my you know, because yeah. it's like they want to still get paid for that hour because they're paying someone else for an hour of right. their time, right. you know. And so I think that's another stressor. Mm. Definitely the inflation stuff, you know. I mean, it is, uh, you know, finding an apartment in this town is expensive right. and people are just stressed with, like, how much they're making. Yeah. And there's a lot. And unfortunately, like, I'm even in this boat, you know, hiring my admin. Poor, poor girl went to some conference, like, work shop thing and like they were all talking about what they make an hour and she comes back and is like Buffy what you're paying me is sad and I was like oh no I'm so sorry but you know for a small business that's like all I can do at this point but I try to take care of my employees in other ways where Mm -hmm. you know she's someone who I don't necessarily stress if she takes a week off I'm not gonna not pay her for that week so she kind of gets paid vacation often Mm -hmm. you know without me batting an eye at it, but I'm not going to necessarily like raise her pay routinely, you know? Right, so there's like right. perks and benefits yeah. that you can kind of compensate for in that way. If you can't provide certain other things, like if you know, like I used to work for a retail company and in my mind, a really nice perk for working there, if you can't pay me a lot would have been like, give me a necklace. I know how much it costs to make them things. Mm-hmm. Like it ain't much. Right? right. But in my little heart, that would have felt so nice to like get a free necklace every mm-hmm. now and again. Right. Um, but like, you know, if you can do that kind of stuff, do the perks if you can't do like the financial piece or the whatever. So like if you can't pay more financially, be okay with someone just taking an hour to go to a doctor's appointment or a mental health counseling yeah. session, you know? Um, that I do, I that do, tells yeah. people that you care, right? Because, you know, I think so much more important for people is the fact that they believe that you have their back versus the, like, nitpicky, like, well, here's this rule, and here's how many hours you can take for here, and here's this, and, well, but if you do that, then we have to do this. I think people care so much more. It's like even if they can't get paid a, as much, they would care more to know— that you're like, yeah, girl, you got a counseling session, go ahead. Mm-hmm. But like, don't take three hours at it. I know they only take an hour. Right. They right. get back, you know, mm-hmm. like, but they would care so much more to know yeah. that you care in that way. I think that's where you can put in policies into place like that medical mm-hmm. medical yeah. appointment policy, mm-hmm. which we have done in some of the groups I've been working with too. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, I think it's mm-hmm. just convincing companies right. that those are things that we actually can do and And not make someone feel bad about going, right? It's like we give them, maybe the company puts a great policy in, but then we have to manage the Mm. leaders also making sure they're not scheduling over those, right? Saying, oh, but you need to be back because we Mm -hmm. schedule a conference call in an hour. And you're like, well, I I need 10 minutes to drive back or, you know, I've got to take this in a private place. So can you provide a private place if I can Mm -hmm. do it virtually, but Mm -hmm. there's no 
room to take that here. Mm-hmm. That call. sitting we in your car any, in the heat is yeah, not that fun. doesn't feel yeah. great. Yeah. So um, I like that idea about yeah. setting aside a spot in an mm-hmm. office building for wellness. So mm-hmm. either they could take their laptops and do their online appointments or maybe right. just mm-hmm. have a chill, you know, just yeah, like, like a little a zen or something. Yeah. yeah. But whether it's a therapy session or going to any other appointment, right. like I, I've gotten in the practice and so is my team on like putting drive, like it was like on my calendar, drive to HR nightmares. You can mm-hmm. call me, but like when everybody looks at my open calendar, it they can tell, okay, she's not able to get on camera right now. And mm-hmm. like, I can't share my screen with her. So it's really important for people to just keep their calendars up yep. to date, right? Yep. If you need the 15 or 30 minutes to drive, mm-hmm. put it on your calendar and block mm-hmm. it so nobody puts a puts a meeting yeah. there. So you don't feel and, stressed out. And I think that that comes from leadership though, communicating that to new people right. too, because I've definitely had clients before who they're, they are stressed to put that stuff on their calendar because they don't, they've never, they weren't told that they could, mm-hmm. right. you know? So yeah. even just a simple thing of, telling new people, hey, yeah, like, if you're going to be out of town, mark it off. If you're going to do this, mark it off. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, just do I it. I just want to know where you I are. I just want to know. Yeah. Right. Because that's, know. that's the part that sucks yeah. as a manager is when, like, you don't know where your people are. Right. Or you didn't expect them to be on vacation and it's like mm-hmm. a surprise. Yeah. So, or they're out for three hours in the afternoon to go to a really long appointment. Like, right. you just want to know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I also am of the mindset of, like, listen, the exempt salaried people, I'm like, we all put in the hours. Mm-hmm. Everybody puts in the hours. So if you've got to go at two o'clock, mm-hmm. I mean, I have one client that like people were kept putting in like 1.8 hours of PTO. I'm like, what is this? And Mm-mm. people were putting yeah. it in. I'm like, Mm-mm. I know That's there's a day where you mm-hmm. stay till six instead of five. Right. I know that there's right. a day on a Saturday where you plug in and read these emails. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm not concerned right. about managing every minute right. of time. Right. But I'm new to that organization. So clearly someone at some point yeah. was concerned <laughs> yes. about that because yeah. they've built that habit. Yeah. And I've had to come in and be like, no, yeah. delete all those yeah. two hours of PTO. You guys yeah. are exempt employees. Yeah. Like I trust that you're mm-hmm. getting the work done. That's the thing. Just trust that your people yeah. are getting the work done. Half you day, know, like full day. And communicate that and make that the norm. Right. It's like, we. I don't really care how long you work. If you're a genius mastermind that can like get it all done, get it all done. Go mm-hmm. have a four day weekend. Yeah. I don't care. And don't penalize everyone right. to put a 1.8 hours right. in on the right. system. Right. Yes. You talk to the person who you know is milking the system exactly. and have a serious conversation exactly. with that person. Don't right. manage your approach and yeah. you know, have to be a jerk to everybody. Right. That's, that's bad culture. Yeah. yeah. But I think going back to what you said on the compensation, I was curious about that. So I'm glad you said it because I think, you know, we're HR people. We do mm-hmm. the comp. We understand. And it's so hard. And I always want to stress to employees, like, I understand that inflation is outpaced. Mm-hmm. Our salary increases yeah. year after year. Right. But we also have budget. We have a mm-hmm. huge team. Like mm-hmm. the company can't necessarily give everyone 10 to 12% right. to afford the, it's like sure. there are some moments. Yeah, there's so limitations for sure. There are limitations. So it's like, I want employees to always hear that of like, yeah. we mm-hmm. are looking at that and we yeah. understand that. But yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean that we can solve that right. today, right? right? Sure. So what are some other things that are happening Well, the business has to be life? successful right. in yes. order. I yes. mean, that's the bottom line, mm-hmm. right? But so yeah. when the business is yeah. successful, then there's yeah. no yeah. room to... Yeah. to mm-hmm. it's funny. I just want to always add. want employees to know, like, we share in that as a stressor. Yes. And it's a yeah, stressor for the leaders, good on that. too, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, yeah. here's where we can do things and... yeah got good bonus pools and different things like that but it's probably not going to look like a 12 percent annual pay increase good god we just did something that was really interesting one company um that i I know about had they lost a big client right and so Mm -hmm. they were a little bit panicked it was Mm -hmm. a big big hit to their bottom line but they kind of did such a great job i think about communicating that with everybody Mm -hmm. so everyone kind of knew there was no secrecy everyone Mm -hmm. knew everyone was on the same page and then they put this packed together. They're like, let's try to save money where we can. And it kind of became a game. And so each mm-hmm. department was like, oh my gosh, you know, I saved this much money. Right. We're mm-hmm. not going to get this anymore. And the person, I was bummed because I love their coffee machine. And they were like, we're going to get rid of the coffee machine. No! I was like, ah! oh, <laughs> yeah. no. But anyway, so anyway, they, sa- they saved and saved and saved and they really tried to do without. And then they just hit their target and they mm-hmm. gave everyone, they called it, well, I'll, I'll be Telling who this is, but they gave a bonus and they had mm. a really cute name yeah. for it, for how they gave the like bonus. Like a little profit sharing. Yeah. 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 And they were like, we did this. And the yeah. camaraderie that that built was great. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it, I have not worked for companies that much that are mm-hmm. like telling me the bottom line as much, mm-hmm. you know, unless yeah. I'm. 
Yeah, it's I like you that. trust people so much more right. when you know actually what's going on. I mean, you don't have to know all the details. The expectations but, yeah. for those people, they're not going to be asking for a raise on a Thursday when they realize, wait, you know, you lost we just a big lost client. A big well, client. they understand yeah. the reason, right? right? It's not, it doesn't feel like a takeaway when you know it's like, here's the intention. And in order to right. make sure we can employ as many people for as long as possible, here's what we can do to right. offset the fact exactly. that we lost this huge client. We mm-hmm. can save in supplies. We can mm-hmm. buy less lunches. We cannot mm-hmm. have coffee. You can drink your coffee oh, at home no. for a while, right? Yeah. Like those are small yeah. sacrifices so that we can mm-hmm. keep as many people employed as possible exactly. mm-hmm. and be able to make this up in other ways so that it doesn't feel like as much of a takeaway. Yeah, We and used it, to call it rings of defense. So when I was an HR manager for a big plant, we actually sat down and thought about before we get to a riff, a reduction in force. What are all these efforts we were going to take before we ruined a bunch of people's lives mm-hmm. that we really care about? Mm-hmm. Um, and it started with doing just the things that you're talking about. And then you move to who are like the people who are on contract or contractors you don't need. You don't need that event planner contractor. Mm-hmm. You don't need, um, you know, maybe you don't need extra engineer contractors and you can just ask people to do a little bit more so they can save their jobs or save mm-hmm. a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, you can offer early retirement packages. Yeah. You can ask people if they want to take um, a voluntary severance package to save somebody else, right? Mm-hmm. And especially for those highly paid folks that, you know, are ready to move on and do something else. It's like, um, hell yeah, I'll take that package so we can save two more people off my salary. So, Mm -hmm. There are rings of defense. And if you're not thinking about it as a business owner, you really should be thinking about that, especially Mm -hmm. if you're grow, 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 growing. And, you know, you're going to have to probably look at yourself in the mirror um, in a couple of years and say, like, is it a time to reset? Is it, you know, is my am I financially profitable? Finally, I live in the world of software where so many companies don't meet profitability until like their 10th or 15th Mm -hmm. year in business. Mm -hmm. And so it's necessary, you know, to like keep people employed to abide by a budget. And a lot of times when you come from like a startup kind of environment, everything's loosey goosey and Mm -hmm, we're all family. And then you start putting some parameters in place like budgets Mm. and you can't keep up with inflation, but also like, and people see this company so successful and like Mm -hmm. we're, we're growing and we hire more people. Yeah, but we're still not profitable. Mm, So like if you want to be working here for the long haul, Mm -hmm. I can't give you that 14, 20% increase that you think you're going to get by leaving. And if you're really all about the cash right now, then yeah, you everybody can make more money somewhere else. Right. Yeah. So if that's the most important thing, you should go satisfy that intrinsic need to make more money right now. Or you look at yourself, you say, you know what? I love the people I'm working with. Mm-hmm. I love the person I work for. I, they're taking care of me as best mm-hmm. as they can. They're explaining mm-hmm. through transparent communications. Yeah. But, I think though, if you also are sharing the right. fact that, hey, be with us on this journey. And yeah. it might take us 10 years, but when we get here, well, this is what's going to happen yeah. to the mm-hmm. company. Mm-hmm. And I think that the more you can communicate mm-hmm. honestly like that, mm-hmm. the more people I think it will... lowers the stressor, yeah. right? Yeah, Which goes back to the mental wellness yeah. part sure. of it. It's yeah. like, if people are in it with you, yeah. then it's not... A team. It's yeah. the mystery, I think, that sometimes yeah. causes those stressors, yeah. too, is the unknown yeah. in dealing with that. 100%. Yeah. If people don't feel secure where they're mm-hmm. at, it's good. that's like kind of the number one unknown, right? It's right. Like anytime somebody says, hey, can we talk? It's like, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> right. I'm going to freak yeah. out if you don't tell yeah. me right yeah. now. You know? Hey, can you come to my office? Yeah. It's the HR it's like, person, you're like, oh my God, am I getting fired? Yeah. Do you know what's yeah. so funny is like, I if I go to a place, I have a pretty regular schedule. And if I go to one of my clients on an off day, oh, everyone's yeah. like, that used to freak everybody <laughs> out. Like, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, when funny. Lisa showed up, at, like when when we I had the yeah. construction client that, that you've now, if I showed up not on a Monday, it was like, why are you here? Mm-hmm. Um, like, I went I'm today. I know. In. Now they're I'm there are more days than they're like so used to it by now. But at first, yeah, they were. They're like, why are you here? I'm like, I've yeah. been here Don't for worry. six months. I'm also not on Wednesdays. Like, right? I'm not yeah. here to let anyone go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. For the last but month, if I, I was, was. I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> well, that's another piece. The stress. Okay. Mm-hmm. I want to jump a ship a little bit. Okay. But there are stressors, I think, in HR that we sometimes ignore because we feel like we have to be superhuman mm. all the time. We and it not. is That's really yeah. difficult having mm-hmm. to let people go. Mm-hmm. Um, it is difficult to kind of have those difficult conversations. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It, it, what you're, to your point, Lisa, it's like, I know what I'm going to have this meeting at three o'clock and it's going to change and rock their world mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. a negative way. Yeah. And sometimes it's their, do, their doing, but other times it's not. And yeah. I think it's tough. Yeah, I had to let uh, somebody go, actually a couple of people go recently, and um, it's always music to my ears when they're just like, 
I'm not surprised. And it's like, thank God. <laughs> um, because that means the manager was doing them right. And so that mm-hmm. could have been stressful for them, mm-hmm. like leading up. But at the end of the day, um, a moment that is sometimes shocking and rocks people's world when they're terminated from their job and they know they're not going to be able to pay their bills for the next little while, that, that mm-hmm. period in their life is going to suck really bad. Yeah. But when they say they're not surprised, that is like, that's a really good. That's, that's what everyone done our should job strive well. for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And pe- treating people with respect and yeah. just like basic integrity mm-hmm. like basic mm-hmm. yeah integrity for them so i have a question for you guys what do you yeah. do you know when you're having those stressful days where you have to let people go or whatnot like what how do you you know kind of discharge that negative juju everybody does different things i play a mm-hmm. lot of tennis and okay. i'm really yeah. really like powerful on the tennis court when i have a that. shitty day yes <laughs> okay so but i don't know i just yeah okay I'm what awesome. do you do Drink a lot of alcohol. <laughs> I was like, are we talking about Beth healthy is habits? Being like, I play tennis. I'm like, uh, I could drink a bottle of wine and cry. No. Um, I, I love Cheetos. I, it's hard. I've done it for so long and yeah. have had so many really terrible situations. Mm. I don't have those as much anymore. Mm. But at the end of the day, while it's really hard and I have so much empathy, even if it's the worst employee or they're stealing from us, you know, like mm. you feel I bad. never lose that like empathy, but I always go back to, you know, this is one moment in their life and like mm-hmm. they will be okay to assume that, you know, that job was the only thing they had. And this is the only time, I don't know. I mm-hmm. just, I kind of compartmentalize it a little bit and just yeah. at the end of the day, it is a business and these are business decisions. And yeah. while they are incredibly hard and they shape people's lives, mm-hmm. which I don't lack any empathy for, um, we have to remember mm-hmm. that it is a business and these are jobs and we're paying people to do a job. And sometimes we have to make these tough decisions. And I always like to say, did I handle it with grace? Did I give them the benefit? You know, did we do what we could? Mm-hmm. Um and I kind of have to take a big picture view. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, there's some where it's like, listen, there was one point where we reduced 25% of the workforce. Mm-hmm. And I sat in a lot. It was just back Meeting to after back meetings. to mm-hmm. back That's to when back. You would need but I drinks. was going to, you know, like yeah. nobody knew that in the mm-hmm. end. But I'm just like, you know, at the end of the day, this is what has to happen because mm-hmm. the other 75% have to keep jobs. Mm-hmm. So to me, I'm such a big picture, mm-hmm. like. I tried to always like yeah. compartmentalize it. I like just that. think it's funny. People that are our friends sometimes will say, like, I, you know, taking a walk with a friend, and I was like, oh yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna have to fire another person, and then last week I did too, and mm. she's like, how do you do this? Mm. But it is. I mean, I think that we, this is our profession, mm-hmm. and we know how to do it yeah. with compassion. Yeah, and yeah. At, at ultimately, it's a business decision, but it is still for yeah. for most of us, it's difficult. Sure. You I'll know. say one of the practices I really appreciated about working for Corning was. When we would have those big rifts, which it was cyclical, it was every few years you'd you'd go through layoffs and then the union folks would get called back. But like Mm -hmm. every time you'd have a meeting for a riff with the salary folks or a layoff meeting, we always had counselors there, Mm -hmm. like licensed therapists. So we'd meet with you and then the next room, we'd walk you right to a counselor and you could talk to them or you could not talk to them. You could get their card. You could get hooked up like to go have a private meeting outside. But like we, we, Mm. we sketched out 30 minutes for you to sit in there if you needed to cry, if you just wanted to vent, if you needed to be angry, like whatever your emotions were Mm -hmm. in that moment, there was someone who was licensed and prepared (laughs) to talk to you as a mental health therapist. So yeah, that's awesome. It's a good practice. And hopefully we felt good about like providing them a package, you -hmm. know, career service that whatever that looked like, it's like, can we just do what we can? And then Mm -hmm. at some point to make the transition a little better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, and then we go and drink a bottle of wine, <laughs> right? No, I don't actually like really do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another episode. I go running. Like episode. Ben, I go running and ex- I go to yoga class. <laughs> I really like to de-stress. I do by not go to yoga tennis. class. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. I drink too. <laughs> but she's more of a Tito's girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. But yeah, it's. But also in your field, too, I I have a couple of clients in the mental health field, Mm. and I think it would be difficult all day to sit through sad stories. I mean, how do you do 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 for yourself and all the people in mental health? How do they? I became the owner of the practice, so I don't see as many anymore. (laughs) So she's fine. So I'm out. (laughs) You're drinking, too. Yeah. No, um, for me, I mean, 
I think calendar management was like a really big thing for me of learning how how to schedule like my appointments. I wasn't necessarily always going to another counselor, but I was like scheduling a workout in Mm -hmm. or like scheduling like lunch. Like I'm very diligent about taking my lunch hour. I'm Mm -hmm. like, no, I will not meet with anyone. I will not get you in. Yes, I have an hour available, but I am not seeing you, you know? So I think like as a therapist, you have to be so good with your boundaries in that way. Um, And so that helps me a lot. And then I think for my clinicians, um, I think my field's a little interesting because most people are independent contractors. So we don't necessarily employ them and dictate what their schedules are. So mm-hmm. I think it's kind of nice because a lot of therapists can really like take an evaluation of their home life, of the things they have going on to say, how many people can I you know, see in a week that feel sustainable for me, you know, that I can like still make meet my income goals mm-hmm. and things like that. But also what's the schedule? Do I, am I more of a afternoon person? Like one of my clinicians, she's like more of a, you know, late morning into the evening kind of person. Whereas I have some that would rather come in at eight or nine o'clock and like be out by two or three. Mm-hmm. So it's just different for everybody. So yeah. I think that's kind of a nice thing about the private practice world a little bit is mm-hmm. being an independent contractor in that way. And then if you have certain appointments, like, you know, okay, maybe you work a four day week and you have Fridays off, you know? So that's, I think for therapists, it's, it's do. interesting. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's interesting because <laughs> we don't, I, um, <laughs> I would say like a lot of people probably think that therapists, you know, work a 40 hour work week, but really there's actually like a lot of science and stuff coming out about how kind of the cap for healthy, like to have a healthy yeah. therapist, 22 to 25 clients a week is kind yeah. of like your max. Well, because you have a lot of like see. paperwork too yeah. that goes yeah, along. Exactly. So you got to have time. Yeah, you, you can't, can't be seeing do, yeah. 30 plus but there's clients a week and then also have that. some practices that require their contractors wow. or their employees or whatever to see like th- have 36 available appointments. How would you like, like that? to that's the sixth of the week? I don't think no. you're going to be getting the best. No, oh, the no, best no. That, I would think that would yeah. lead quickly yeah. to some burnout. Yes. 100%. I mean, even uh, I think that calendar thing is probably, that's good advice for Anybody, Anybody yes. yes. Anyone, yes. right? It's yeah. like, take your lunch. Yeah. Take a 10 minute break and put yeah. it in your, like Lisa said, yeah. put it in your calendar that that 15 mm-hmm. minute break is you're like, I'm walking yep. around the building, yep. at least getting outside for five to 10 yeah. minutes, yeah. grabbing something, you know, I'm not yeah. just back to back to back yeah. to back because I think that causes yes. a lot of you stress. You can also make calendar appointments private. So if you don't want people knowing which I just doctor you're going. Yeah, but like a lot of people mm-hmm, put it yeah. in there because they're going to click the link for the address when they get in their car or whatever. Like oh, if, right. they, mm-hmm. they, if you don't want people knowing which doctor you're going to or therapist you're going to, they just yeah. make it private. Mm-hmm. Something I tell my clients too and, you know, my clinicians, um, I say, because a lot of times what we do is we get into this like hamster wheel of overscheduling ourselves, mm-hmm, you know, with mm-hmm. all the meetings and things. And so I say, okay, Maybe the next three months of your life are booked out and you can recognize that that's a season that is going to suck. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Yeah. But I want you to look ahead at your fourth month and I want you to go ahead and put your lunch breaks in for that fourth month. Even if you can't do it right now, don't sabotage your future self. You know, like Love that. go it ahead. It is helpful and, to know, yeah. like, this is, like, I'm a little over capacity <laughs> right like, now. Oh, well, Thanks to a certain individual <laughs> sitting right here. But um, I'm like, okay, this is This is short, a season. I should have used that. Term, yeah. right? This is a season. And I'm also like, we're, like, we're begging always you, in please a season. Take I'm, I'm taking the perspective of, like, <laughs> this is extra income. I can put it over mm-hmm. here into saving. This is a short term. Yeah. Yes, Pippa is not happy about this new schedule, though, Lisa. So her, you sorry. owe her a present. Is Pippa I have her an animal? Pippa's still. a dog. Okay. <laughs> I bought her a <laughs> gold chain with a P on it, and I can't find it. I got to find her little gold chain. I'll give it to you, like, when you're done. Yeah, with yeah this she's life. just a dog, not a child, so I don't, like, really have to be home. But, yeah, <laughs> she's not happy. I love that. Good. But All that's right. kind of how you deal with a lot of stress is hanging yeah. out with your dog. Pippa's your baby. Yeah. So. I mean, listen, you know, if you're a man out there, a single man in Wilmington, like you got to prove that you're better than sitting on the couch with my French bulldog. And most of the <laughs> ones I've met are not. Are you putting a plug in for a date with a man who's fairly yeah, exciting? Yeah, he's got to be more exciting than beach. my cute little French bulldog. He probably has a boat. Might She's pretty cute. All right. That's a plug. Um, Amy's looking <laughs> for a mate. <laughs> And that's oh. another episode of HR Nightmares. <laughs> thank um, you, Buffy, thank so you. much yes, for being awesome. here. Thank Tell you. people yeah. where they can find you. Yeah, so if you're in Wilmington, Madewell Center for Wholeness, um, 
you can do in-person visits here, but also online, www.madewellcenter.org. Um, feel free to check out the website, look at our team, and reach out if you want to get connected. Do you have open Absolutely. spots for the retreat at Ruffin We do, actually. House. Yeah, okay. there's a It's a lovely house spots. on Ocean yeah. Beach, a little red house right off the, the bridge. The pool will be yeah. heated. So. Yeah. I went, and I have to say, it was really, it was a really great weekend. Yeah. Are so the details fun. on your website? Um, actually, those details will be on wellnessbuff.org. Okay. I'm the wellness buff. Wellness buff. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to thank me. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Right. Okay. Yep. Thanks a lot, Buffy. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, ladies. Appreciate it, you guys. Thanks. Bye.